This video is sponsored by OWC. AirDrop is an incredibly useful feature that lets users discover nearby Macs and iOS devices and securely transfer files between them via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work correctly, and so in this video, we're gonna go over some ways that could help you get AirDrop back up and running properly. So first things first, make sure your device can even support AirDrop in the first place. There's a good chance it can, but to be sure, you need to have an iPhone 5 or later, an iPad 4 or later, any iPad mini or a fifth generation iPod touch. Now for the Mac, all models released in 2012 and later and running Yosemite or later will support AirDrop. You can confirm by going into Finder and clicking on Go in the menu bar. You'll see AirDrop right there in the list of options if supported. You can toggle AirDrop on and off a few different ways, but the easiest way on iOS or iPadOS would be to head into Control Center, long press on the cluster of icons here where the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth toggles are located, and you'll see an option for AirDrop. Tapping it will show you a few different options. You can either turn it off, contacts only, or everyone nearby can locate and send you files via AirDrop. If you're having trouble getting AirDrop to work and it is actually on and in contacts mode, you can just try switching to everyone if it's not already selected. On macOS, head into Finder, then the favorites bar you should see AirDrop listed there. If not, there's a way you can get there via a keyboard shortcut, which is probably the faster way anyways, and just use Command-Shift-R to open up AirDrop. Then at the bottom, you will see Allow Me to be Discovered By, and then you can select everyone from the drop-down menu. Also on the Mac, just like your iOS or iPadOS device, AirDrop settings can be found in Control Center, and you can access them by clicking on the Control Center um, icon in the far right of the menu bar. If you're still having issues with AirDrop, we can try the old turning it off and then back on again method. This time with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as AirDrop relies on both of these settings to transfer files over the air. So on iOS or iPadOS, just head into Control Center and tap on both the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth toggles until they are grayed out. Then tap them on again to make sure they're blue and back up and running. Mac OS is basically the same method here. You just head into the menu bar, tap on the control center icon here in the top right corner and deselect both icons. And then of course, turn them back on. If you're hosting a personal hotspot on your iPhone to provide internet access to another device, AirDrop's not gonna work. So the only solution here is to unfortunately turn off the personal hotspot. This will make the internet connection unavailable to the device that was using the hotspot, but you can always turn it back on again once you've transferred files over from AirDrop. So to do this, just head into Control Center, go ahead and long press on the cluster of icons again here in the top left corner, and then turn off Personal Hotspot if that button is of course on and illuminated in green. These next two options are very simple, but they're helpful. Make sure your device, like an iPhone or iPad, is actually unlocked. If the device is locked, or obviously if it's powered off, it's not going to appear in your list of available air droppable devices. So of course, make sure they're unlocked and powered on. Then the next thing you should do is actually bring your devices closer to each other. When a shared Wi-Fi network isn't available, AirDrop relies exclusively on Bluetooth to find those devices and transfer files. And Bluetooth has a range of about 33 feet on modern iPhones. So make sure the two devices you want to use AirDrop between are within this range, otherwise it probably won't work either. If you're still having issues on a Mac, you can try limiting the strictness of your Mac's firewall. You can do this by heading into System Preferences, Security and Privacy, and then select Firewall Options, and then uncheck the box next to Block All Incoming Connections. Then, right below that, check the box next to Automatically Allow Built-in Software to Receive Incoming Connections. Unfortunately, if none of the above works, then you should probably try hard resetting your device. Now, this process is different depending on what device you're using, and so I recommend just checking out the guide linked in the description down below for more information on how to do all of that. If all else fails, then you're probably going to need to contact Apple support or check into a Genius Bar at your local Apple store to see if they can run a diagnostic check on your device. Before we end today's video, I do want to give you more information about today's sponsor, OWC. OWC has come up with a solution for those who want to have more than one external display with your M1 Mac. This is the OWC USB-C Dual HDMI 4K Display Adapter with DisplayLink. 
and it solves the problem and allows users to connect to HDMI 4K displays via a single Thunderbolt port for M1 Macs, but also really just any Mac or PC that that user might want to do the same thing with. It's bus powered and features an integrated USB-C cable for easy use on the go, very portable but very durable, and allows HDMI pass-through support for audio signals to pass through the adapter and onto the connected displays. If this is an issue that you have, I highly recommend picking up this product because it's most likely going to solve all of your problems. And of course, you can check out this product or any other product that OWC has to offer by clicking the link in the description down below. This has been Down With Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.